Hello CS2250 computer application students, Mr. Lang here and we are now in Excel section 3. We are working in our exercise number 1. We've got 12 things to work on. Uh, so we're going to get going right away. Stick with me here. I want to make sure that there's a couple things that we need to make sure that we're very accurate about uh, when doing this. So let's go ahead and get going. First of all, oh my screen is adjusting for me as I'm starting to move things. Uh, maybe I have a ghost. Cool. I like ghosts. Uh, here we go. We're going to enter a function in cell B14 that finds the average of the range B4 through B8. So I'm going to click right here in my cell B14. Now, when I want to try to find the average, I'm going to go up to my editing group the auto sum area and I'm going to choose average here now when I do that it starts looking for numbers Excel says hey I know you want to average something I see a number above it is that what you want to average no it is not I want to average from B4 through B8 so at the white plus click and drag you can see the range appear there and I'll press my enter key my average of these numbers if I add it all up and divide by 5 will give me this. All right, we're moving on to 2 of 12. We want to enter a function in cell B15 that finds the maximum quarterly revenue for that range, B4 through B8. So I'm in the right cell. I'm going to go back to my editing group, my auto sum option, down arrow, and I'm going to choose max here. And again, it's looking for numbers to find the maximum of, and we want to click with the white plus from B4 through B8 and I'm going to press my enter key. I now am going to look for my minimum quarterly revenue and you guessed it. Well, I should say this. I bet you that's what they're going to ask for. And sure enough, it is the minimum quarterly revenue. So we'll go back to the editing group auto sum down arrow and again these are the the ones that they use statistically uh, the higher percentage of people are using these if you need more there's always more functions for the auto sum as well but this are the ones that we need here and we're going to go ahead and click and drag through that information right there and i'll go ahead and press my enter key and the minimum is twenty-eight thousand. now the directions do not have us do this and I'm just going to demonstrate this so don't do this but let's say you need this information for quarters two three four I highlighted the range with the white plus I go down to the bottom corner with the fill handle drag that across my other quarters boom this information is referring to this range all right, let me click off of here somewhere. This information for the minimum is again is looking at this range. Kind of cool. So I'm going to do a control Z on my keyboard to undo this. Oh, maybe. And now it doesn't like me. So now I'm going to do my control Z to undo this. And there we go. All right, so kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to click off of that. I'm going to hit my save key that we have those directions done. We're now on 4 of 12. We're going to select the range D4 through D8 and type quarter 3 as the range name. So D4 through D8. We're going to highlight through here. And we're going to go up to the name box. If I over here, you see where it says name box there. I'm going to click into there and I'm going to change this to quarter with a capital Q with a capital T camel case. No spaces there. Quarter three. And I'm going to go ahead and press my enter key. So if I, for example, clicked in this here, it tells me I'm in D6. But if I select this range, I am in quarter three. Now, there's also the range, I bet you, I believe they made this for us already. This here is our total revenue range. They made that for us already. That will come into play later. Okay, I'm going to press my save key. Next, 5 of 12. We're going to enter a function in cell B18 that finds the average of the totals in the total rev range. No, use the range name in the formula. All right, so I'm going to be in B18, revenue, tar, uh, B18, excuse me, right here. There we go. Average of total revenue. T 
total revenue is here. We're going to find the average of that using that range name. So I'm going to go up to my auto sum average. And now it's looking for numbers, as I mentioned. But I'm just going to start typing that range name of total with a capital T. And there some things pop up and there's total revenue right there. I'm just going to double click that. Try it again. Double click it. There it goes. Total rev. And look at it. It shows the name. I could continue to type the rest of that if I wanted to. All right. But uh, that's an option that you have. I'm going to click my check mark there. And the average of our total revenue is 295000 I'm going to go ahead and hit the save key there. We're moving on. 6 of 12. Type min target as the name of cell B20. So if I go down to B20, I'm going to give this cell right there a name of capital M I N, capital T A R G E T, min target. And I'll go ahead and press my enter key. So that is the name of that range. I'm going to hit my save key there. Again, if I click off of it and click on it, there it is. Now you don't have to do this, but if I would happen to do equals min target and press my enter key there. Oh, Mr. Lang, I didn't, I should have double clicked that. Let's try that again. If I equals min target and enter with the whole name, look at it, it's equaling that amount. So I'm, I'm referring to that range. Kind of cool. Again, you do not have to do that. I'm going to press my save key. We're moving on. 7 of 12. We're going to do a logical test, this is called. So we're going to make cell B21 active. And we're going to do an if statement here. So if B10, B10, which is quarter one's revenue, if that is less than our min target, and our min target is right here, all right, if it's less than 350,000, which it is, this is what we're going to do after there's a little comma in there. This is what's going to happen if it's true. We're going to take B10 minus our min target and it will give us how much we're off by. So about $8,650, I believe. But if we are greater than our min target, for example, quarter three, we're greater than it. The answer would be zero because we met our quarterly minimum target of 350. So let's try this. All right, so I'm going to click into here, and I'm going to start with my equals if. All right, open parentheses. Mine and my keyboard is a shift nine. You can see that the logical test appears. So what we're going to look at. So if B10 is less than min target, and I know the directions have a lowercase m here and a lowercase t. However, we need to refer to this cell, so we named it with a capital M I N T A R min target right there. So I'm going to type the rest of it out and you can see now this is starting to highlight B10 is less than B9 is less than min target, which is this range right here. So if that is true, we're going to comma and we would then be. So again, if that value is true, we now are on to this part of it. B10 minus again the min target but we got to do it with a capital m the directions are leading us astray there min target awesome comma so if it's false though again if we are over three hundred fifty thousand dollars well we're not off of our revenue we are just going to put zero there don't forget to end this with a ending parenthesis and i'll press my enter key and you can see because that logical test was true, 350 is our min target. We didn't reach it. We're about 8,650 short of that. Again, if I brought this over to using my fill handle, I can see I'm off of my target by 38 grand. Well, it's a zero here because I met our target. I met our target with 430 there. Those are zero. So kind of cool. I'm going to do a control Z there to undo that. All right. And I'm going to hit my save key. And I'm going to move on to 8 of 12. 
we need to change the page orientation to landscape. So I'm going to go up to my page layout ribbon. I need to, uh, okay, so we are in our page layout ribbon. We're going to go to our orientation here and we're going to change that to landscape up. Oh. I had to pause my video for a second, so it took a second to get us back in action. I'm going to choose landscape here, and uh, so we're good there. Now you're going to start to see these lines here. That means if I printed this on a normal 8 by 11, maybe in a half inch paper, whatever it might be, that is what would print on the page. So I'm starting to see that. We're going to 9 of 12, getting close. Change the top margin to 1.5 inches and center the worksheet horizontally. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to go to our margins in the page setup. And since I don't have that here, we're going to go to the custom margins. And I'm going to increase my top one to 1.5. And again, multiple ways you can do it. You can type it in there or you can use the arrows. And I do want to center this on the page. And when I click that, you can see that kind of gives me an, uh, a, a, a basic kind of what, what that might look like if I center that on the page. If I centered it vertically, now it goes down a little bit and centers it horizontally and vertically, which I think is kind of cool. But I'll go ahead and choose OK to that. All right, so now we're going to move on to 10 of 12. Display the worksheet in the page layout view. Bottom right hand side, if I hover over this, that's my normal view. If I go over one more time and let my mouse sit on it, that's the page layout view. I'm going to click that and you can see then that uh, what it looks like a little bit between other pages. This would be another page that would print there. All right. And what's nice by this is we can start working in our headers and footers as well. So I think we're doing good. All right. I'm going to hit my save key. It's been a couple minutes since I've done that. 11 of 12, we're going to create a header that prints the current date at the right margin and then click in the worksheet outside of the header area. So we're going to go up into the right margin up here. I'm going to click into it. All right, and we need the date. So I'm going to go to my header and footer uh, toolbar here that appears because I clicked in my header. Got to be in your header for that to appear. And I'm going to go ahead and choose current date. And that's going to put the and and then the date. And it's going to look at what the current date is of my computer and put that in there. So if I click back into the cell somewhere or into the worksheet into an active cell, I can see the date there. Kind of cool. I'll hit my save key. Last but not least, let's go down to our 12 of 12. Create a footer that prints the file name in the center. So we'll go down to our footer. We click on here. It activates our header and footer. And we want to choose our file name in the header and footer elements. And file. It's going to look up at the file name here and give it that information. I'll click in the cell somewhere. And you can see that it does give it that name. I'm going to go ahead and click the save key here. And, well, hopefully this will be good for us. Let's check our answers. See what happens. Again, insert Jeopardy theme music now. Hey, awesome. We did well, you guys. So again, there were a couple of different directions there that they mistyped. I am going to reach out to them and let them know, hey, we need to change that uh, uh, direction for that min target with a capital M and a capital T. But again, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, hey, we got one more exercise in Excel to work through together. So I'll see you in uh, Excel section three, exercise two. Thank you very much for being my students and have a wonderful day.